In this video, I use the CNC to customize a concrete and cedar outdoor garden bench. I use plans from manabouttools.com, which are linked in the description below. This is not a step-by-step -step video on how to build the basic bench as Kent from Man About Tools has a great build video which is also linked below. What I did is took his basic design and built it in a way so all the parts were cut using the CNC allowing the concrete legs to be easily customizable as shown here. So let's take a look at how a CNC can be used to customize concrete. Here is a picture of Kent's original design and build. A sharp looking cedar bench with two heavy concrete legs. Where I decided to customize this is in the inset area of the concrete. Kent's plans, as well as his video, walk you through the process of building the concrete form out of plywood and 2x4s. I used the CNC for almost all of this so I could easily and repeatedly cut out new parts as needed once the forms began to show some wear and tear. Once the form is complete, you simply mix up a bag of concrete, pour it in, let it dry, then disassemble the form around the concrete. Here you can see the result of my customized form. I also used the CNC to cut out the assembly holes in the cedar slats so everything could be repeatable. Now let's get to the CNC so I can show you how I created this. I mounted a sheet of 3 quarter inch plywood and started by peck drilling holes that would be used to mount the sides to the bottom of the form. I wanted to do this so if a time came where I simply need to replace one side or other part of the form, I could cut out a new one and it would mount to the existing form exactly the same as the part I was replacing. I then moved on to customizing the inset. This required a cutout of the letter H with a quarter inch spiral bit followed by a 60 degree V-carve bit along the outside edge. Here's the end result that required just a little cleanup. And as a reminder, this is what creates this once you pour the concrete. Next, it was just a matter of cutting out all the rectangular parts of the form. Bottom, sides, and the inset piece. Now I did a quick test assembly using the peck drilled holes I had cut on the CNC previously. So here is the end of the form that holds the bolts for mounting the seat slats. Full disclosure, I did a complete test build prior to making the bench in this video. So I am reusing the bolt block from that first test and I don't have video from when I made that. With the sides, bolt block, and the bridge all screwed into place, I was happy with the fit and disassembled everything so I could permanently mount the inset. On my first test bench, I had a problem with my inset piece. I only used screws and no glue to hold it to the bottom. Thinking if I wanted to change out the inset, I could just remove the screws and attach a new one. But then, this happened. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> 
That's not good. <laughs> the insect came off the bottom piece and was forever cast into my concrete leg. So I decided anytime I would need to make a new custom concrete leg for another bench, I would cut out a new bottom piece and inset piece and securely attach them permanently so I did not have to risk this happening ever again. Another side note, pay attention to where you have removed wood in this inset and where these screws are placed so they don't poke through the other side. And another side note, in the Man About Tools build, Kent applied a coat of mineral oil to the wood pieces of the form for protection. I tried that on my initial test and wasn't too happy with how the wood reacted to the wet concrete. So on this version, instead of mineral oil, I applied three coats of General Finish's outdoor oil to all the pieces prior to assembly, and this offered a lot more protection in my opinion. The form is now reassembled, caulked, and bolts are installed, and is ready for concrete. I used a 50 pound bag of concrete shown here, and almost all of it fit into the form. I used a reciprocating saw with no blade to vibrate the air bubbles out. Can you hand me one of those pieces of wood, babe? Yeah. Just one. Maybe more than one. Thank you. Okay. Can you hand me another one?
One more, please. Come look at the H and see what you think. Why did you not put acid there? Well, no, that was actually on purpose because. Come over here, Henley. Well, I want to do with this. No, I want to show you the H, though. Come here, see what you think. Look at that. Look at the concrete we made, babe. Yeah. What's on it? You like it? Yeah. It's pretty exciting, isn't it? Yeah. We did it together. When I saw this was a success, I repeated the process to make a second leg. If I were to try and make multiple benches, I'd probably have multiple sets of forms to expedite this process. The holes in the seat slats are super simple. A larger hole cut part way down to accommodate a large washer, and a smaller hole cut all the way through for the bolt that is firmly affixed into the concrete leg. Again, I set the files up for this to cut on the CNC so everything would be repeatable, although this could easily be done on the drill press. The 2x4 stretcher underneath the bench just has one size hole that's cut all the way through. I did a test assembly and as you can see, the cedar boards are not the same color or tone which is a problem I ran into on my first bench. So I decided to do a technique I had never used called Shotsugiban, which is a Japanese technique for preserving and antiquing wood. You literally torch the wood, clean up some of the loose ash, and essentially you're done. I opted to apply General Finish's outdoor oil over the top of this, which I'm sure is not traditional, but I liked the look and figured it added even more protection but likely overkill. The main goal was accomplished, which was to even out the color of each piece while giving the wood a fighting chance to survive life outdoors in Texas. I let the concrete cure for a couple weeks, knocked the edges off so everything was smooth to the touch, and then sealed the concrete legs. Sealing the concrete was another lesson I learned from my test piece. As you can see here, this was not sealed and it stained rather quickly from sitting outside.
all that was left was final assembly and this bench was complete. I hope you enjoyed seeing how you could take a solid furniture design and using a CNC easily make it customizable and repeatable without much effort at all. I hope you're inspired to get out in your shop, get creative, and expand the horizons of what you can do with your CNC. Again, the intent of this video is not to give you the step-by-step -step instructions on how to build this garden bench. Kent from Man About Tools has already done that, so please watch his video and take a look at his plans. They're both linked below. I just wanted to show you how I use the CNC to customize the bench and show you that you can use a CNC to make something like this completely unique and that it would take little effort to customize this bench time and time again for a variety of clients. As always, thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing, smash the like button on this video, and I hope to see y'all soon.